Swing trading on Betfair is about riding trends and momentum for big profits, but not about taking excessive risks as a result. It's a case of letting profits run when they have the ability to and cutting out losses short when they don't go our way. So this example starts about four and a half minutes before post time, which is very deliberate. You'll understand why if you've seen the three big swing trading mistakes video on this channel. So for context, what we're looking at here is a maiden race at Chepstow. Uh, the market activity is just picking up proper now. I've been watching this market for the last couple of minutes and I have reasons that I believe that this favorite is more likely to drift than it is to steam. Uh, there's support for the second favourite. There has been significant support. And you can see that I've opened a position there at a price of 2.26. Now, momentarily, the price has gone against me. And that's something that does happen in swing trading. And it's okay for it to happen in swing trading, providing the reasoning for opening a swing trade and planning to have a swing trade has not changed. So to my mind, at this point in time, it hasn't changed. This is that skittish moment within the marketplace where real money starts to come into the market more frequently. And therefore, I don't mind the price going against me for a few ticks. Obviously, if it starts to get down towards 2.10 or lower, then I'm going to have to dump this trade and accept that maybe I've made something wrong. But the money is still coming in on other runners and it's in that market formation phase of the market. So we accept that the price needs to play out. And that is probably one of the largest problems for swing traders is they open a position, then they start doubting themselves. They look at it like a rabbit in headlights, watch the price go against them. And the whole situation has changed, but they're not actually reassessing the situation over and over, asking the question of, you know, the reason I opened this swing trade, is it still there? So in this instance, I believe it is. And that's why I'm quite comfortable doing this. Obviously, I have the benefit of experience, but that's the way it goes. So if we look at the charts down the bottom there, you can see there's been a significant amount of money traded on this favorite. Also, I like to swing trade on the favorite for two reasons. Firstly, shorter prices mean that there's often more flexibility and movement in the price, which means it's available for us to swing trade with. And secondly, there's increased traded volume. So if something should go wrong, we're actually minimizing that risk. It's easier to dump a position than it would be at say, I don't know, the 10.0 price range on the fourth runner in this instance, because there's very little money there to be matched so I'm looking for confirming signals to what I believe as it happens and then I'm topping up my position so there's a stop in the market there you can see on the back side of the book there's a significant amount of money sat there which is sort of temporarily holding the price at the moment obviously it's around about an important price point on the ladders but you can see more importantly on the second favorite there's significant genuine volume flying into the market and I say genuine volume because it means that this volume really wants matching. It's pushing down on the price, it's chasing the price down. And so now we've gone past that tipping point where we're into the green zone. Now there's two options that you can do here. You can just leave it to play out if you're really quite confident in your initial um, assessment. If you're a newer swing trader, then I would also advise scaling out a portion of your trade, offsetting the green zone, so you've got more flexibility if the price bounces back against you, because then you know, you're know you not in that position where mentally you find it harder to sit and watch the trade play out, because you do need some patience. You need to let it run in your favor if you wanna make that profit, and lots of people always close the profit out too early. In this instance, I'm quite happy with it. I'm quite comfortable with it. Everything that I initially thought is actually happening. So there's no reason for me to scale out any of my stake right now. I just want the price to move further and further and get myself a bit more of a juicy profit on the go. Now the 4.0 price, which I'm highlighting there with the cursor, is obviously very important on the second favorite because that is a point of resistance in terms of the price steaming. So I'm wondering, is that gonna stall? If it is, that's gonna have an impact on the favorite. Obviously we're getting closer to the start of the race now. So you'll see that I just scaled out a small portion of the swing trade there at a price of 2.48, which is obviously just under the 2.5 being six to four in fractional odds. So another point within the market where the price action could slow down, not quite the same as a crossover point, but you know that activity does tend to happen there from time to time. So I'm being mindful of that as well as the time to the start of the race. We've got about 30 seconds or so left to the start now. And I appreciate that this really looks quite simplistic and it is on reflection, but the biggest problem, which is mentioned in that previous video about the three problems with swing trading is 
actually allowing your profits to run, benefiting from that, and closing out those losses nice and short, nice and quickly. So there's £67 profit in one race. Subscribe to the channel for more Betfair trading help and check out three biggest mistakes that Betfair traders make swing trading here in the end screen. They catch so many traders out, leaving them staring at a losing position. It's unreal.